Hello, good day. Welcome to Coding with Feral. In the previous video, I showed you yet another UI for using Olama locally. So at first we started with Misty, did a bunch of stuff with Misty, and then in the last video, I quickly showed you Open Web UI, which I said is what I use every day. Now I could continue this, and that was the plan to show you yet another UI that you can use locally. Um, and that is LM Studio from Microsoft. And it's really, really good. It runs on Linux, Windows, and any one of the M series Mac. So if you have an Intel Mac like me as your personal computer, it wouldn't work. However, if you have a M series Mac, it works. And I have another Mac attached that's M series and I've tried it on that. But I'm not gonna do that. So if you want to play around with yet another UI and see what fits your style, then those are the three UIs I have for you. Misty, Open Web UI, and then LM Studio. So instead of doing that, I'll jump straight into doing something a little bit more fun. And that is to show you how to use Fabric, why I like it, and what it can do for you um, in terms of giving you a bunch of already curated prompts. Now I show you a little bit about Fabric in the last video, but now I'll show you how to install it and we'll see just how, with some of the prompts that I already give you, how we can really level up your game. So without further ado, let's jump in. So here I am on the Fabric Web UI and I've shown how to get it before. You can just search for Fabric AI and your web browser and then the GitHub project should come up and you just click on that and there it is. In terms of installation, there are a number of ways of installing Fabric. Now notice I've skipped over what Fabric is for now. So let's just start with installation. If you scroll down and you click on installation here, you have a number of ways to install it. You can download the Windows executable. You can get a pre-built version of you know, the Mac binaries and Linux binaries for ARM and Intel CPUs. Um, and of course you can use something like Brew to install. Um, notice if you use Brew to install, it installs as Fabric-AI, and so you'd have to set up an alias. I do not do that. Since it's a Go application, I just simply use this um, Go install command. And whenever I want to check if there's a new version, I just rerun the exact same command and it just updates it. So updating couldn't be any easier. Yes, you could do the same thing if you're rerunning any of these other commands. Um, it should do the same thing and update of updating it. All right, so once you have Fabric installed, because how have you installed it? Once you have it installed, now it's time to do some configuration. Now you can um, set up your path, of course, to make sure that it's available on your command line. Um, if you do the go away, it's going to be in the right directory. If you do brew, for example, it should be fine. Um, I'll assume that though you know your system and therefore you know what you need to do. So once you can run Fabric from the command line by being able to type F-A-B-R-I-C in something like minus H or something and see that it runs, well then um, that's where I consider Fabric successfully installed. Once that's done, you need to run fabric space dash dash setup. And once you do that, now mine is already configured, but let's just say I were to run it fabric space dash dash setup. You can type the number of the LM provider you want to configure. And so this video doesn't cover how you get a key. I'll leave that up to you. If you're trying to do this stuff and you're using that LM provider, I assume that you know how to get a key. But since most of us, or at least I'm covering Olama, Let's just say we want to configure Olama. Now you'll see here I already have Olama configured, but I'll do it again. So I'll type 14 and it knows that Olama by default usually run locally. So this is completely fine. Again, we've done this already and check and see Olama runs locally here. I also have Olama running remotely on another server. I could enter that if I wanted to use that Olama server, but I'll just press enter to accept the default value. and. If your Olama is set up to use a key, you type that in, of mine is not, so I'll press enter and keep going. And then it asks about some timeouts and so on. Again, I'm gonna just keep the default and press enter. And notice it comes right back to the screen. Like I said, you can just go through the step for multiple LLMs 
um, provider or AI providers, uh, AI vendors as they call them here. Now I want to set my default. So I'll put select 21. So what does it say? It's saying that for the Olama server I pointed to or Olama instance, these are the models I have access to. And similarly for Gemini, these are the models. So let's just say I want my default model to be Gemma 3, 4 billion. So I'll just say 69 is my default. And then it says enter model context length. I'm going to leave this empty to use the default. And so that's it. I'm back to the main screen again. And if you're finished configuration, just press enter and that's it. Now, what I've selected where my API key is and all this other stuff is stored in the fabric.env file. And you can find that by going to um, your own directory, the hidden folder config, and then fabric. You'll see your LL, you'll see it all. There's some other directories there, context, extension, pattern, sessions. We don't really care about most of these directories. The pattern directory is the only one you might want to look at once in a while. Um, and that contains all the patterns that's available with this release of Fabric. And so you don't have to manage it really. Um, you just update Fabric and it would install it. Now there's one thing that you should know. If at the time of this video, you, your installation of Fabric does not, does not include the create PRD um, pattern, which we're going to use in this video, all you have to do is make a directory here, create underscore PRD, and then within that directory, so PRD, oh, oh, pattern, sorry. So in the pattern directory, make a create PRD directory, then I'm going to see the internet PRD directory. And there's a single markdown file called system.md, which you can get from the Fabric website. And so you get that from here. You go to data, patterns, create PRD. And again, this is only if your installation of Fabric does not include it. And then you click here, you click copy, and this copies this raw file, which is just this markdown, and you just paste it or into that file. So now that's where the patterns are stored. The thing I really came here to show you is where Fabric stores the configuration. So if you do ls minus a or la if you have this alias, you'll see that there's a that env file here. And this that env file is where a configuration is stored. You see that it has um, that my default vendor is Olama. The default model is Gemma 3, which we selected. And then there's some other things that are in there that I didn't set, you know, just, just created by um, by Fabric. There's my Gemma key, my open API key. So, and then of course the Olama API URL, and this could be pointed to some Olama instance running somewhere else. So that's where the, the config file is. I use this sometimes because I want to change things. I just come in the config file, but you don't have to use a config file. You can just use Olam. Um, you can use, if you're not comfortable modifying, if you're not comfortable modifying the environment file, just use the fabric setup um, menu. Um, so if you're not, if you're not comfortable modifying the .env file, or you don't know where it is, or you can't find it, or any of that stuff, just use the fabric command with the minus minus setup argument. All right. So let's get back to business. I told you how to install Fabric. I told you where to find configuration, but I still haven't told you what Fabric really is. So let's go back and do that. So Fabric is a project um, created by this guy, Daniel. So Fabric is an open source framework for augmenting humans using AI. It provides a modular system for solving specific problems using crowdsources of AI prompt that can be used anywhere. Basically, Fabric is a tool that gives you all these prompts that the community, um, you know, submit. And using Fabric, it makes it easier for you to organize a thought, consume information, organize information, that sort of thing. If I if I scroll back up and I go to data, the project changed recently, and now prompts are in the data directory. And so you can see all these directories, which are patterns. 
but each one of them is a prompt. It has user instruction and system instructions. For the most part, you really don't have to think about it. If you want to copy it for whatever reason, then the one you want is system. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for the most part, you can just use Fabric from your command line and you really don't even have to worry about it. And if you want any updates, just rerun it and install it and you'll get any new patterns that were published. Now that we have Fabric installed and configured and we kind of know what it does, let's put it to use. So why would you want to use Fabric? Let me show you something that we might want to do. And if I didn't have Fabric, what the differences are. So let's go back to my open web UI. And this time I'm going to start a new chat. I'm gonna use Gemma 3 4B, so a very small model. So this is my prompt. You are an elite software engineer. You are proficient in web development technologies. Please write a modern to-do application. Instruction, take a step back, think deeply, read the entire input, um, in input section before continuing. Actually, I don't have anything else in the input section, so um, I can take that out. For output, I'll put the application in a single file, right? which contains the JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. So I kind of just want to stop at this, and I want to see what kind of results I'll get with this. So let's take this, I'm going to select it all, and I'll go to my open web UI, I'll paste it in. In the interest of time, I'll speed things up, but you'll see everything. Um, now, if this does create everything in a single file, I might be able to enable artifact and see and be able to interact with my to-do application because remember open web UI supports artifact. So let's see. Sorry, you give me the option here to preview, which I believe is gonna take me to the artifacts um, view. So let me reduce this a little bit so I can have other things show up and there you go. Um, so just write the note um, some helpful text that you, know, you can improve things, but um, here we go. Let's try this. So, buy milk, um, see, add it. Okay, so this doesn't quite work. I don't know if it's because it's still going, but um, yeah, this doesn't work. Um, so now it's finished. It gives you some ideas about how you can improve things, but um, let's just see if this works. So we go buy milk. And yeah, this still doesn't work. I thought maybe it wasn't working because we're still writing out, but that doesn't work. I just wanted to show you what I get with the prompt that I, I pasted in just now. So how would Fabric help me in this case? Well, there's a pattern in Fabric. And so since I have the UI up, let me just use that. There's a pattern in Fabric called PRD, which is a product requirements document. So I can say create PRD. So if I scroll down to create and I go to PRD right here, here's the system prompt. And again, identity and purpose, and it tells it what it needs to do, right? So I'm not gonna read all of it, you can read it, but what this allows me to do is to just use this to create my prompt for the same application. So now that I see the pattern I want to use, how do I use it in from the command line? You tell Fabric which pattern you want to use, and then it appends whatever you send it. Send it to your AI model, the default one that you have configured, or unless you override it, and then it outputs the result. So in the, my case, if I want to use this create PRD prompt, I have to be able to input what I actually want to create. So I'll go back here, and let me modify this a little bit. I'm going to say what I want is just a modern web application in a single file. I'll just take out all this stuff because I don't care about all this. Remember, the PRD will figure that out later. And so here we go. And I'm going to copy this. I can go back to the command line and I'm going to say PB paste. So what is Fabric going to do? PB paste is going to paste what I have or send what I have on my clipboard to Fabric. Fabric is going to take that, append it to the pattern I want to use, which is this create PRD, take that entire uh, prompt now that's been augmented and send that to my LLM provider using the model that I have as my default. And once the model responds, Fabric is going to write it to standard out, but now I'm going to pipe that to PB copy. 
and so let's just enter and that's going to run and once I get the command finish I can just go here and I'll just select everything that I have here delete it for now and I'll just paste whatever comes back and so if you look at this now you'll see that what I get back remember I asked fabric to use the create PRD prop but what I got back is now a product requirement document for a modern to-do application so this document outlines the product requirement for a modern to-do application the goal is to create a simple intuitive and effective web application that allows users to manage their daily tasks and blah 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 right the model just enhances it with all other things right the target audience things that we don't all this stuff I did not put in um, I did not put in the previous um, prompt right but now I have all of this now you can modify this to your liking if you want but what I'm gonna do is just trust this I'm gonna copy all of it and now I'm gonna go back to open web UI. I'll paste in my PRD and then I'll send it to the same model Gemma 3 4b and let's see what we get this time what we'll get is a better design app it also specifies certain things to the coding model about how to write the code and organize it and so on right um, so maybe overkill for a simple to-do application but in the next video I'll show you how we're going to use the same PRD and have the model actually create the file and do everything so we simply would just give it a prompt for the application we want to create sit back watch the model actually create the file and write it out okay so we can see um, somewhat similar output you know telling us about future improvement um, this one went a little bit further um, telling us how to use it it also noted that um, important notes single file the biggest constraint is math no site um, server side code um, you know like back end and local storage simulation so that's fine but we could see that the application pretty much looked the same except now we have this clear completed um, thing but let's see if this actually worked so we go buy milk same thing click add and this actually worked so one shot again I didn't mind if it didn't work what I was hoping is that it would create a better application and it seemed to have done that um, so let's add another thing buy soap I don't know but sure um, might need soap and here I can click on this and it's marked as completed that's nice touch you really should go take a look and see what you're getting with fabric this simple tool so there's so many prompts here that um, trying to go through all of them will just take a long time so I just encourage you to really go take a look and see what's available um, so this is a lot um, longer than I intended so with that said um, I hope you learned something please leave a comment um, below let me know what you found interesting what you think could have been improved um, give a thumbs up to the video really appreciate it if you just do a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber you subscribe if you're already subscribed thank you so much um, take care be safe have a great rest of the day all right bye